Hi, and welcome to this lesson where we will explore the main style sheet file for WordPress themes. You will be able to create the style.css file header to configure data about the theme, describe the list of header fields available within a theme's style.css file, and add the necessary header field to designate the parent themes folder in a child theme. So let's dive in. So starting with creating the style.css file header to configure data about the theme. The style.css file is a style sheet required for every WordPress theme. The file's header comment section is used to let WordPress and users know about the theme. Here in a code editor, we see the header for the style.css file of the default WordPress 2024 theme. Let's go over to WordPress now and see what this looks like. But just before we do that, I want to quickly point out the screenshot image file. Okay, now let's jump over to WordPress. Here in the WordPress dashboard, if we go to Appearance Themes, then we go into the Theme Details. We can see the screenshot on the left and the information from the style.css file header. Here on the right, we've got the theme name, the version, the author, the author's URL, we've got the description, and finally we've got a list of tags. Let's take a closer look now at the different fields that are available to us within the themes style.css file. Here we're looking at the main style sheet file for the default WordPress theme 2024. And I'm going to go through the fields that they've included in theirs. So starting with the theme name, this needs to be a unique name. And that's especially if you plan to submit your theme to the official WordPress directory, the theme name as we saw in WordPress, is seen by users, so think about that when you're choosing your name. And if you're just getting started with theme development, you can just stop after adding the theme name. That is all you really need. Next is the theme URI, and that is the URL of a public web page. This is where uh, people will go to get more information about your theme. Next is the author's name and followed by the URL that gives people more information about the author. Next is the description. And again, this is especially important if uh, you're wanting users to see this and get a good idea of this theme is for them. Next is requires at least. Now this is the oldest WordPress version your theme will work with. And next is tested up to. And this is the last WordPress version the theme has been tested up to. And next we have requires PHP. And this is the oldest PHP version the theme will work with. Next is your version and uh, followed by the license and license URL. Next, we have the text domain. And this is a string used for translations. So make sure to include this if you plan to translate your theme and make sure that it, you're using all lowercase letters. And finally, we have tags. Now, this is a comma separated list of features that your theme supports. And now let's take a look at adding the necessary header field in order to designate the parent themes folder 
within a trial theme. Creating trial themes is actually a more advanced topic for theme developers. However, it does deserve a brief mention here. It's important to understand that your child theme not only inherits your parent theme's functions, filters, templates, and so on, but it will both extend and override its parent theme. Now that connection between the child and parent theme is created by adding the header field template to the style.css file of the child theme. Now this here is what it would look like for a child theme created for the 2024 theme that we just looked at. So this concludes the overview of the main style sheet for WordPress themes.